This morning's scripture finds us in Luke chapter 1, beginning with four, verse 46. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I woke up this morning. I'll move this back, kids. I won't, I won't steal it forever. Uh, I woke up this morning, and I couldn't get the image uh, of our banner of Mary out of my mind. I, I know that some of you from where your vantage point is, it's hard to see because of the Christmas tree. Uh, but I encourage you to take a moment and come look at this banner uh, of Mary that Christopher Holt uh, painted for us. There are several verses uh, in the Gospels that talk about how Mary pondered these things in her heart. She took moments to think about and reflect upon what was really going on. And, and when I thought about this, this banner this morning, I, I thought a lot about the, what goes up. The, I, I don't know if that's a stream or a piece of fabric. Uh, most everybody probably can see that. Maybe not y'all right there. I'm sorry if, you, if it's harder. But when I thought about that, I began to wonder, and I've never asked Christopher why he painted it or, or what it's supposed to mean. But I began to wonder, is is that the Spirit coming to Mary? Is, is that the song that Mary sings rising to the heavens and to God? I wondered, is that the breath of the Spirit entering Mary's womb to breathe life into the Christ child? I also thought about the connection, and, and, and Rob will talk about Joseph tomorrow night at Christmas Eve as we finish our banners. The connection between the two ribbons, between Mary and Joseph. I, I've never asked Christopher why he painted those, and I probably won't because I enjoy the mystery. The Magnificat, uh, the song, the scripture that, that Lisa read for us this morning, is one of the most known scriptures in, in all of, of Luke's gospel. Mary's song is a song that uh, reminds us and teaches us and leads us to think about what it means to be human in the midst of this story that we are so familiar with each year. One of the things that I thought about is if today really was two days before Jesus' birth, what Mary must have felt like. Now, I have never been pregnant so I am not going to stand up here and say that I understand anything about it other than observation. And what I will observe is that if we were two days before the birth of a child, at least in my house, things that might have been pondered were, oh my gosh, will this ever get over? <laughs> things that may have been pondered are, what in the world is happening to me? Things that may have been pondered What's going to come next? I love to think of Mary's Magnificat as a song. We have been blessed this Advent season with some amazing music from the Rudder piece uh, the first week to Bluegrass last week to the kids singing this morning. And, and we had a trio this morning that earlier said so the music's been incredible. Uh, lessons and carols tomorrow night, y'all. It's, it's going to be amazing. Music does something for our lives and in our, in our lives, and it, and, it, and it shapes us and makes us think and makes us feel and know the world in a different way. And when I think of Mary's song 
as a song. It reshapes how I think about it. Now, about 15 years ago, I had the opportunity to live in London. This is a story I've told before, but I had the opportunity to live in London in college, and Annie came to visit me when I was in London, uh, and that's where I proposed. And so I wanted to set the bar really high for my children about where proposals should happen. If you live in North Carolina, they need to be in London, in the Queen's Rose Garden, of course. Um, what you may not know about Annie is that her undergrad degree is in music, and so I saved up from working a construction job that previous summer and bought tickets to the London Symphony Orchestra. And I think we saw Mahler, is that right, Annie? I don't Yeah, we saw Mahler at the Symphony Orchestra. What I don't remember is much about the music, but I remember the experience. We got there early, and there were people still tuning, and I guess they tuned to the violin one. I don't know a lot about this stuff. There must have been 100 instruments on there, and when they started playing, when they started playing, you could have put a, a curtain down. And I, I couldn't tell you if which instrument was, was playing. I couldn't tell you if it was an oboe or a violin or a... I, I didn't know what it was. Because the song that I heard was like one voice. The song that I heard was like one voice. It was this beautiful voice that came from this orchestra that was my timer to say, you have to stop because this is a short homily today. <laughs> That's when my watch was going off. And I, and I heard this song, and it, and it just seemed to remind me of what the body of Christ can be. So there's two things that I think we learned from Mary's Magnificat. One is this, is theology. We said last week, and I want to remind you, Luke's gospel reminds us that we have times in our lives where there are folks that are forgotten, there are folks that we forget, we are forgotten, and we still have a voice. Loose gospel is written from the perspective to remind us that even though at times we forget others and we feel forgotten, we have a voice. That's one thing. The second is, Mary responded to a call. Mary responded to a call. When, when the angel Gabriel said, you're going to have a kid, when she got pregnant with what was to become the son of God, the son of humanity, I cannot imagine what that must have felt like. And, and I'll tell you, I, I don't know, but I do know there are times in my life when I have felt called to things and I wanted to say no. And sometimes I have, I'm not proud of that, but sometimes I have, I've gone the other way. And what Mary reminds us in her song is that we have an opportunity each day to say yes. And this Advent season, this season, like any other season, reminds us that there are new beginnings. That each morning we have an opportunity to say yes to God's call. And you know what's interesting about that and interesting about the symphony orchestra is that, that whether you're, whatever instrument you're playing, you're playing a specific thing, right? Like you have music in front of you and you're playing a specific thing. And I don't know how this works, but when they play a specific thing and they're all playing together, they sound like one song. And you each, you got notes to play. You got songs to sing, but part of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ is that when you sing your song and you play your part, and when I sing my song and I play my part, together we have this opportunity to make this beautiful music. So I hope, I hope we have the courage of Mary I hope we have the foresight to ponder like she did. And even in the face of, face of that which seems difficult, we say yes. We say yes to conversations with our neighbors that we don't really want to have. We say yes to being nice and kind and loving in ways that are hard. We say yes to standing up for those that are not being stood up for. We say yes. And as we take a look, at this ribbon that floats up into the night sky or down from the night sky. We don't really know exactly what it means. But what we do know is it means something's happening. And we get to be a part. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.